Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Welcome back. This is episode number 129. Today, we're going to be talking about birthday parties. Growing up is funny, isn't it? As we get older, we wish we're younger. And when we're younger, we want to be older. I remember thinking as a kid, when I'm older, life will be better. Now I'm older, and I would do anything to be a kid again for a day. Actually, I'd love to spend a month of my life reliving the best day of each year. How cool would that be? I'm curious to know, as a kid, did you think that being an adult was better? My daughter Julia is three years old now and won't stop talking about how much she wants to be an adult. She wants to be a grown woman. (laughs) I've asked her why a few times, and her answers vary day to day. Today, she said, if I were an adult, I would go shopping and buy strawberries and watermelon and crackers. When I told her that she could come with me to the store and buy fruit and crackers, she didn't respond. She just continued, if I were an adult, I'd drop Clara off at school and say bye and give her a kiss and then come back and get her. Clara is her little sister. She's about a year and a half younger. This is interesting for two reasons, because this is the second conditional. If I were an adult, I would do something. So this is a hypothetical situation. And it's also interesting because my daughter's logic doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, if I were a kid, I would imagine that being an adult would allow me to eat sweets all day. I was sure that's what she would say because she's got such a sweet tooth. But no, she loves pretending that she's a mom. She'd love to drop her daughter off at school, her baby sister. She'd love to feed her, put her to bed, try and change her diaper. If she were an adult, that's what she would do. Yeah, funny. So Lucas and I, Lucas is my husband, uh, we tried to convince her that being a kid is wonderful. And then we started listing off reasons why. One of the examples Lucas gave was that kids get to go to birthday parties and get treat bags. Julia immediately said, I want my treat bag. And I immediately corrected both of them. That special bag of goodies that you get at a party is called a party favor. When you're a kid, you receive party favors at birthday parties. Sometimes inside you might get a pencil, some Play-Doh, maybe a paper airplane that you can build, some candy, and other knickknacks. In any case, it's called a party favor. And Lucas's lack of knowledge for this term was like a light bulb going off in my head. This has to be a five-minute English episode. There's so many great terms about birthday parties that can be learned. So, That's the topic for today. In this episode, you'll hear a ton of birthday party related vocabulary, phrasal verbs, and collocations, all of which are presented in a short time frame. Five minutes is the goal, although it might go a little longer. This is an advanced listening exercise, so don't stress if you don't understand everything. What you can do is one of two things. You can take notes, look up vocab, and do all of the grunt work of learning challenging words and phrases on your own, or take the easy route and sign up to premium content for this episode. The premium content for five-minute English episodes includes everything you need in order to master the challenging terms you hear in the audio. You are given the definitions for key vocabulary, exercises to practice, as well as quizzes to make sure you've learned everything that you should have. There is also a pronunciation video and a challenge. All premium content can be found in the episode notes 
or on the website at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. At the end of the episode today, I'm going to talk generally about my childhood birthday memories. I'll also share a very embarrassing moment that happened at a birthday party while I lived in Germany. If you want to hear about it, be sure to stay tuned until the very end. Find a peaceful area that's quiet, where you can let your mind fall into the story. You need to be free from distraction to make the most of this experience. You can always pause the audio when needed. Are you ready? It's Friday morning, and tomorrow is Saturday, your sixth birthday. You can't wait. Unlike some of your friends who were born in winter, you're a summer baby and get to take advantage of the warm weather and celebrate outside. This year, there'll be a slip and slide and a bounce house. You have no idea just how lucky you are. On Saturday morning, you take a shower to, as your mom says, wash off your five-year-old skin. After your squeaky clean, you throw on a pair of swim trunks and a shirt with a T-Rex on the front. T-Rex is short for Tyrannosaurus rex, the most ferocious dinosaur of all. In the U.S., most children's parties have a theme, and this year, everything from the decor to the invitations and the cake is in theme. That theme being dinosaurs. Emerald green streamers hang from the rafters. A large happy birthday banner has a leafy design and pterodactyls weaving through the letters. The tablecloths match the plates, cups, napkins, and party hats, all of which have prints of velociraptors on them. As you sit in the kitchen eating breakfast and waiting for the first guests to arrive, your mom fills up the remaining balloons. Last year, you blew up balloons as a family, and it took a hot minute. This year, your mom took one for the team and got a helium tank. In no time, she manages to attach a hundred shiny balloons to long strands of ribbon and lets them float to the ceiling. The end effect is top-notch. While your mom admires her work, you eye the blue and green colored cake that sits as a centerpiece on the table. When the coast is clear, you walk by quickly swiping your finger through the frosting. When your dad comes back with ice and drinks for the ice chest, you're ready to party. Your sixth birthday goes exactly as planned. All of your classmates who RSVP'd turned up and everyone took part in water play. Outside, you run, jump, and slide on the slip and slide screaming your head off as you make your way across the wet surface. You fill up water guns and squirt your friends from behind. You run through the sprinklers. Everyone gets wet. Every now and then, you climb into the bounce house and jump like a madman. When you start doing flips, your mom yells at you to be careful when little kids are inside. When there's a big crowd and a big party in the U.S., especially for children, the host often orders pizza or makes burgers and hot dogs. Kids like it, and it's easy. Today, your dad mans the grill, and next to him are the patties, toasted buns, and the usual condiments, ketchup, mustard, and pickles. You place your burger on a plate next to some fresh watermelon and potato chips. With no time to waste, you scarf down your lunch. It's time for musical chairs, and a round of pin the tail on the donkey. You honestly think they're a bit childish, but your mom makes you join in. What you're interested in is the T-Rex-shaped pinata hanging from a tree in your backyard. You can't wait to smash that thing with a bat and watch all of the lollipops, jelly beans, and chocolates fall out. Soon enough, that's exactly what happens. And like a ninja, you drop low to the ground scooping up handfuls of goodies into a plastic baggie. You indulge. 
And after the candy, you indulge some more in cake and ice cream. Everyone sings happy birthday to you while you make a wish and blow out your candles, all six of them. To you, the cherry on top of this day is presents. Many people would say you're spoiled. A tower of shiny presents awaits you. You tear open boxes and bags to find transformers, remote control cars, video games, Legos, and much more. It feels like Christmas in July, and it looks like it too. By the time you're done, there's tissue paper, ribbons, bows, and wrapping paper strewn across your living room floor. In the United States, many children's birthday parties are thrown at home, while some parents prefer renting private party rooms at public pools, arcades, banquet halls, playhouses, bowling alleys, laser tag centers, and more. To spice up the day, some parents may hire a clown to make balloon animals for the children or paint their faces. Sometimes there's a magician stunning kids by pulling a rabbit out of a tall black top hat. As the sky grows dark, some of your friends head home and you hand them a party favor on their way out. Inside of each favor is a yo-yo, a top, some stickers, a mini Play-Doh, a pencil, and a lollipop. You tried to pick some useful stuff because let's be real, party favors often go forgotten. Bouncy balls, silly putty, slime, mini coloring books and puzzles, all of it, while great for about 10 minutes, ends up in the bottom of a drawer. Tonight, some of your closest friends join you for a slumber party. After a final go in the bounce house, you put on your pajamas and lay out your sleeping bags on the living room floor. That's when your dad walks in. Rumor has it, he says, if you suck the helium out of these balloons, you'll sound like a chipmunk. Five minutes later, 10 balloons are deflated and everyone, including your dad, is rolling on the floor in tears. You can't remember the last time you laughed so hard. In the United States, people often speak of milestone birthdays. 16 is one of them, and it's extra special because it's when you can legally take your driver's test and get your driver's license. It's the first taste of independence and the first stage of early adulthood. Girls may have a sweet 16 party, which can be a small and intimate gathering or an extravagant event with a DJ, band, and dancing. Some families really go all out by renting a banquet hall and presenting their daughter in a gown. 18 years old is also a milestone birthday, although it's not as hyped in the U.S. as it is elsewhere. When you turn 18 here, you can buy a lotto ticket, vote, and do a lot of other things adults can do. However, you can't rent a vehicle, you still technically can't go into casinos, and you can't buy alcohol. The next milestone birthday is 21. A 21st birthday party is very different from a 6th birthday party. Yes, people still might use party hats and noisemakers, but the only theme at a stereotypical 21st birthday party in the U.S. is booze, since at 21, you can start buying alcohol here. The 21st birthday boy or girl might throw a house party. At it, they may offer some food, like veggies and fruit, maybe chips and dip. But what they really stock up on is alcohol. And we're not talking Grey Goose. They buy the cheap stuff, whatever is a bang for your buck. So PBR, Two Buck Chuck, and Moonshine. If you drink enough of it, you're guaranteed a hangover. At a 21st birthday party, you might find trays of jello shots and a beer pong table set up with red cups. You may even see a keg, or some people doing keg stands, hanging upside down while drinking an obscene amount of beer. After 21, each decade is a milestone birthday. First comes 30, then 40. At 40, people joke that you are over the hill. Since 80 is the average lifespan and 40 is halfway, you've 
made it to the other side. Many jokes are also made about midlife crises. Then comes 50, 60, and every decade up to 100. Each stage of life has its perks, from being able to drive at 16 to getting senior discounts in your golden years. A birthday is just another day, but it's also a new beginning. It's a time to reflect on life, on how far you've come, how you've changed, and where you're going. So live it up and take lots of videos and pictures. You won't regret it. That's the end of the five minutes. Now we're going to talk a little bit about my experience with birthdays because I want you to also reflect on your own experiences. When I think back to my birthday parties throughout the years, I have a lot of very distinct memories. In elementary school, kids always brought cupcakes or treats to their classmates on their birthday. I loved when kids brought homemade cookies, brownies, or cupcakes. Although most parents would buy pre-made cupcakes from the store. Do you guys know those? The type that you find in a U.S. bakery with a mound of artificially colored buttercream frosting on top? I hated those cupcakes as a kid, and I still hate them. You put it in your mouth and instantly your mouth is coated with a greasy film that doesn't go away. No matter how much water you drink, you almost have to take a piece of paper and wipe your mouth clean. Outside of school, of course, it was better. Um, As a child, the most memorable birthday parties for me happened at two different places, at Chuck E. Cheese and at home. Chuck E. Cheese is a national restaurant and arcade game chain, meaning you can find them throughout the United States. There you can eat pizza, hang out, or play games to win tickets and get prizes. There's also a big mouse that walks around the place named Chuck E. Cheese. He talks to kids. He's pretty scary, actually, but he's essential to the experience. As a kid, I remember thinking that Chuck E. Cheese, the location, was the best place in the universe. Each game cost a quarter, And on our birthdays, my parents would cash out $10 in quarters for my brother and I. So we got $10 each. That was a ton, a ton of playing. We would challenge each other to different games, shooting hoops, whack the mole. They also had a pinball machine and Pac-Man, all of that good stuff. Also, when I was a kid, Dance Dance Revolution, DDR, came out. Do you guys know that? Where there's a pad on the floor with squares that light up, and you try and touch the different squares that are lighting up so that you're dancing along with the character that's on the screen. It was such a big deal. Some kids spent all of their quarters on that thing, and I swear some of these people could have been backup dancers. I just watched since I was uncoordinated and couldn't face the shame of not getting past the most basic round, but I remember admiring the people who could dance. After a day spent at Chuck E. Cheese, my family would go home with all my friends, and we would do cake and ice cream. Yeah, my friends usually also spent the night at my house. We had a slumber party because it was December 23rd, and it was always fun to wake up on Christmas Eve and make a special breakfast for my parents. We usually made green pancakes and red eggs, Christmas colors. That's a very fond memory of mine. Anyway, I could tell you about my 16th birthday, my 21st or 30th, but let's save those for another time. I just wanted to generally talk about my childhood birthdays because I want you to think about your childhood birthdays. How did you spend them? Where did you go? What did you do? Think about it. It's actually a great writing assignment. So get a piece of paper, jot down your thoughts. Just see how much you can actually remember from the past. Yeah, so (laughs) before we wrap up today, I want to share an embarrassing moment that happened at a friend's 
30th birthday party in Germany. And the reason is because this is just kind of funny and I want to share it because I never, ever talk about this story and it's kind of weird. Um, So when I was 25, I lived in Berlin. My best friend, Nina, as you probably know by now, is German and her boyfriend and, well, now husband named Karsten was turning 30. For the occasion, he planned a big house party, and for the event, he got a piñata, which I thought was pretty cool, right? Why do we have to be a kid to smash open a piñata, right? It's something that you can do at any age. Everyone loves candy. It's fun. Whatever. So piñatas, according to Nina, were a new thing in Berlin. In California, on the other hand, We have a lot of Mexican-Americans and Mexican immigrants that carry this tradition to the United States. So it's always been normal at childhood birthday parties, at least in my lifetime. So there we all were, dancing, eating, drinking, and Karsten walks over to a doorway and hangs the piñata over it, ready for people to hit. This is all fine, but there was one thing missing. In the U.S., we learn that the proper way to hit a piñata is to be blindfolded. To be blindfolded means to have a cloth or something covering your eyes so that you can't see. When you use a blindfold, you feel like you're blind. You can't see at all. And that's what the fun is all about. You try to hit the piñata. You might miss. You look funny. And maybe the piñata even comes back and hits you. Now, Karsten had people hitting at this piñata with their eyes open. And I thought to myself, well, this is stupid. It ruins the whole purpose of the piñata. Then I thought, oh no, he doesn't know how to use it properly because it's new here. So I don't know what got into me. Maybe it was the strong German beer. (laughs) But I stopped the music and made an announcement. Obviously, in German, in a room full of Germans, and that was that they needed to cover their eyes and spin around before hitting. And they listened. Honestly, 10 seconds later, Karsten walks out of his bedroom with a shirt on his head. He spins around a few times, and then something happened that was really, really ridiculous. He smashed the bat straight through a glass door, which broke into a million little pieces. The party fell silent, dead silent. Nobody knew if they should laugh or be concerned or help. It was just silent. Karsten stood there, pulling up the shirt from his eyes and looked around him, and he was surrounded by shards of glass. Shards of glass are little pieces of glass. When something breaks, afterwards you're left with shards. He wasn't hurt, but he was in shock, and nobody knew what to say. So in English, we call this a party foul. If someone drops a drink at a party, spills something, or knocks something over, someone might yell out, party foul. A foul is the opposite of a good thing. But yeah. After about a minute, the music turned back on. I helped clean up the shards of glass that were on the floor. And what's weird about this whole thing is that we never talked about it again. All I know is that their good German insurance covered that stinking door and that I should keep my mouth shut. There is a lesson to be learned here. Number one, enjoy piñatas whatever your age is, rent a bounce house, get a slip and slide, relive your childhood. I honestly think we can choose to be young if we want to. It's mental. So next birthday party, maybe you should plan a different and awesome one for yourself. You deserve it. And number two, hit your flipping pinata outside. Hit it outside, people. That's the end of this story. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on birthday parties. Try to think about the birthdays in your life. Do any of them stand out? In other words, are some more memorable 
than others? Why? What happened? If you are active in season three or in all premium content, I encourage you to submit your story. I want to hear about your birthdays, the special ones, or maybe just one special one. If you want to take part in that, be sure to sign up to all premium content. You will find the link in the episode notes. All right. Hope you're having a nice day. And until next time, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.